Hey guys, self-medicated wreck here. Well, it is a absolutely gorgeous day. First week of June, Mrs. Self-Medicated Wreck and I are out at our favorite place camping again and um, decided to come down to this uh, trout stream that I love here and uh, try out a couple more of my fiberglass fly rods and, and give them a little bit of a review. So today I'm going to be fishing with a Philipson seven and a half foot and also a Horrocks Ibotson mohawk seven and a half foot that uh that i restored a few years back and it's both of these things are just really really sweet casting rods especially the phillips and it's uh just a man it's a great casting rod and i don't want to say for a fiberglass rod or for a vintage rod it's just straight up a great rod so i'm going to walk down here to the river and see if we can uh, find any fish and put this thing to the test a little bit. So this is the um, Mohawk Horrocks Ibotson Rainbow. And I've got a, um, a browning reel on it. And I'm going to eventually be restoring this reel. I've got another one just like it that's really nice that I restored, but this one is uh, pre-restoration. But I did put all new windings on, on this rod, um, so it's very, very beautiful. I've got an epoxy finish on the, on the blank and rewrapped, put all new oversized guides on it and rewrapped all of the guides uh, in the same style that it was originally but it's uh, definitely refreshed. Seven and a half foot. And this seems to be, in my opinion, the sweet spot for, um, for vintage fiberglass rods. Anything much over seven and a half foot, they really start getting tip heavy. But this one is a, a really nice casting rod. So enough talking. Let's see if I can catch some fish on it. The other rod I'm going to fish with is this Phillips and Royal. <clears throat> Again, it's a it's a seven and a half foot fly rod. I have not restored this rod. This is original condition. It's in very nice shape. I, I do have the same matching uh, period correct browning reel on it, and this one I did do a nice restoration on, and it's a uh, it's a really nice little vintage reel. So I've got this rigged up with a couple of nymphs on the Philipson rod. And if we get so lucky as to get a hatch, I'm going to use the Horrocks Ibotson for the uh, dry fly action. I don't see anything rising. I'm gonna move upstream just a little bit here. See if we can get, there's a little bit of deeper pocket water up here I'm gonna to try to hit. Well, just about the time I said I didn't see anything rising, I just saw one rise here in this foam line. So I see a PMD flying around and I'm gonna just set up right here and make a couple, oh, there he was, it's a little guy. But let's give him a shot. There are PMDs coming off, which is so much fun. I just love a PMD hatch. They can be challenging and they can also be super productive and rewarding. The light is just perfect. It's going to be a little bit evening-ish. And uh, I have a good feeling about this. Just look at that beautiful, ooh, there was a big splashy rise. 
that's not usually a big fish when you see a splashy rise to PMDs. They're usually, the big fish are usually more the sipping kind. But man, that looks good. This looks so nice here. So I'm gonna shut this off and give a little bit of an explore. If anything good happens. Oh yeah, there's some fish rising. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, there's some PMDs coming off here. They're a little larger than what I've got on. Oh, this rod casts so nice. This has even got a really old vintage line on it. You can kind of hear that line zinging through the guides. I bought this reel off of eBay and uh, it had this original line on it, but the line is in great shape. It's super old, it even has one of those little eyelets in it. But it's in excellent condition, so I couldn't bear to get rid of it. Here's the first fish for the day. This little vintage rod. Not a big guy. But, got him on a dry fly. It's kind of fun. Let this little guy go. Before we stress him out anymore. Let's see if there's any bigger ones in there. Still not the big fish we're looking for, but a little bigger than the last one, maybe. And again, really, really fun on these old vintage rods, especially on a dry fly. Let's keep looking for a big one.
again, pretty much a carbon copy of the last ones. Fun, again, but uh, you know, not getting much bigger. Keep on trying. So there's still quite a few fish rising out here, but I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Um, everything I'm catching is fairly small. I'm gonna go subsurface. I've got this Phillips and rod rigged up here now, and I'm going to, uh, I've got a couple nymphs on it, and I'm gonna throw that out there and see, look at that, show offs. I'm gonna throw this out there and see if I can get down below and maybe there's some bigger fish rising. I mean, uh, not rising, but feeding down deeper. Let's give this a shot. Oh, this Philipson rod is just so sweet. It does not feel anything like, if you've ever fished fiberglass rods from the 70s, forget it. This is like a super lightweight graphite rod. Not every experiment works. I'm gonna go back to the dry fly. All right, well, caught a few fish down there in that, in that uh, run. And now I am in the pool above this run. I got out and kind of leapfrogged upstream of this big run. Sometimes at the tail end of a pool, I've found that some big fish will hang out and pick off bugs before that riffle. So I'm just gonna take a look here and see if there's anything rising. There's still a few PMDs coming off. They seem to have slowed down a bit, but I'm thinking right out in there, Looks like a darn good place, right above that riffle. I'm not seeing a thing rise, but I think I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. There's another pretty decent brown. Then I'm gonna dry. Well, it turns out to be about the same size as the other ones, which is, you know, not, not bad. It's still not the big guys that we're used to catching out here. But got them again on the dry fly and on the old 70s fly rod. I think this might be a little bit bigger fish here. Woo wee! Taking out some line. Got a nice bend in the rod. Definitely a hard fighter. Yeah. I don't know. Came up, he didn't look that big. Hope I don't have him foul hooked. All right, I'm gonna shut this off. 
net them, and then we'll see what we got. Yeah, very beautiful brown. Look at that guy. Very beautiful fish. All right, let's get them off of here and get them back in the water. It puts a nice bend in the rod anyway. Not sure how big he is. Getting a little bigger. Oh yeah. This is just pure fun, I'm telling you. Using these fiberglass fly rods from the 1970s are just fun. He's getting a little bit bigger. That might be a 13, maybe 14 incher. Beautiful fish. Check that PMD. We'll let him go back, get a little bigger. So, you know, this just goes to show you really don't have to have an $800 fly rod to get out here and have fun catch fish. This rod right here, I bought on Craigslist for 10 bucks. And like I said, it was in really bad shape, but I took all the old thread, thread off of it, <clears throat> rewound it. And um, as you can see, it's a nice casting rod. It'll do anything that an $800 rod will do. And it's just pure fun. Let's see if I can catch some more.